John Morosi, MLB Network Insider. He'll be across MLB Network's programming, including extensive trade deadline coverage next Tuesday. That's August 1st. And uh, you got the Mariners Twins coming up this afternoon. First pitch scheduled for 110 Eastern. John, kind enough to join us. What's the latest on Shohei Otani, John? Dan, good morning. Uh, for Shohei Otani and the Angels right now, they're actually playing pretty good baseball. They've won seven out of nine, and now they have their playoff odds moving up towards 16%. Uh, so what I'm being told by sources, Dan, they're going to wait until – this series wraps up in Detroit and then their weekend series in Toronto. So we're still probably waiting until Sunday to know if they're truly buying or selling. Wait, so it's that tenuous? It's that tenuous. It's that tenuous. Potentially the most significant trade in North American pro sports since Gretzky is riding on the next five games <laughs> for the Los Angeles Angels. And one of those series will be in Canada, in Toronto. Right, uh, right up the block from Wayne Gretzky's restaurant, if it's still there. Exactly. Not too far from Brampton, Ontario, where uh, number 99 is from. But no, it's it's a great wow. point, Dan. And it's it's one of the more amazing stories in sports, not just what happens with Shohei in the coming days, but also where he ends up playing as of opening day next year. And, and it really is a global story that, at least from my perspective, we can't talk about enough. I thought it was wishful reporting. Like, we we like chaos. We like change. We like when stars move around. I grew up in an era, I'm sure you did too, where your stars usually stayed with the same team. I get the, you know, capitalism, free market, all of that. But let's look at this logically. If you were going to trade for Shohei Otani, first of all, the Angels are going to get prospects, I'm guessing. So then you got Mike Trout and you're going to be in a rebuild, which to me doesn't make sense. If I'm going to trade for him, he's got to sign with me. But then if I'm going to trade for him, they're willing to trade him. Why not wait until the end of the season when he's a free agent? I don't give up my farm system. I know I have to pay $600 million. I just don't understand the logic. Help me understand the logic of this with a team that would trade for Otani. We'll start there, sure. and then we'll go to the Angels. Sure, Dan. It's a great question. And I think at the outset, I'll, I'll make clear that there's a pretty big gap between the Angels being willing to move him and a trade actually happening. Okay. Because to your point, for the Angels to move a player of this caliber, especially when they're playing better, you're going to have to buy them out of the chance to contend with Shohei for the balance of this season. And very importantly, Dan, to potentially see him hit home run number 60 in your uniform. Let's reflect on that photo for a moment and how many places that photograph will hang for a long time, home run number 60 or beyond for Shohei Otani and the value to your brand in doing that. So I think the reason why you bring him in now is because he does have a manifestly massive impact on your brand, on your team. He may well be the MVP. So it's certainly the type of rental player and impact you go back and think about the 08 Dodgers and how Manny Ramirez changed that team. It's that kind of, a, of an impact at the middle part of the season. But Dan, to your point, for you to make this trade, you have to be quite sure that you're already going to the playoffs and you'll have him potentially make you a World Series team. And also that you would have two or three of the top 100 prospects in the sport to make it worth the Angels' while. That is a really narrow road to turn and, and navigate, and one of the reasons why I still think the odds are likely that Otani stays in Anaheim through the rest of this season. Yeah, I, I, I like the possibility of chaos here, but I understand the logic of just the business side of this. I can't trade for him if I don't know if he's going to resign, and if he wants to go to market, which it sounds like his agent wants him to go, you know, saying he's earned the right to be a free agent. I'll just wait. If I'm the Dodgers, I don't have to give up my farm system. Or if Tampa Bay wants to get in, uh, Baltimore, I think you've talked about, maybe the Diamondbacks. Is it going to be an American League team? If Otani would be traded, would it be an American League team he would go to? You know, Dan, it's a great question. I don't think it's necessarily the case. I think that broadly speaking, we could see an NL team get him. Uh, and you mentioned a few teams that are really intriguing, uh, like the Rays, like the Orioles, like the D-backs. 
those three teams in particular are better than expected this year. And he could make a massive impact on them for a couple months. And if he helps them win a world series, if he helps, uh, if he gets himself to 60 home runs in that uniform, we have to take a bit of a step back and say, Shohei is a global icon in the way of let's borrow from a different sport right now. Think about what Lionel Messi is doing right now for soccer in South Florida and in our country, broadly speaking, the kit that he's wearing in Miami is instantly with a couple weeks worth of games becoming one of the fastest selling bits of sports memorabilia in the world. Now, Shohei and Messi are different in some ways, but the global sports comparison, I think, is appropriate here to where if you're the Rays, the Diamondbacks, um, the Orioles, the chances of him signing with you next year are quite remote because I do think the Dodgers have a pretty good home field advantage there. So this is your shot hmm. to have your messy moment <laughs> is right now. And, and there certainly is a reasonable price to be paid to have that chance. Baseball got rid of the second trade deadline. Right. Remember when a player, if he cleared waivers, then you could still trade for them after the first. Why, why did they get rid of that second trade deadline? You know, Dan, it's really interesting. And of course, Justin Verlander helped the Astros win the World Series six years ago with a August 31st trade. There used to be the waiver trade deadline that effectively existed at the end of August. Baseball wanted to eliminate the, the uncertainty and often the confusion that came when we would report on trade waivers in August, there was a lot of um, there's a lot of opaqueness about what that meant for a particular player. So as a result, it's more of a unified idea. It's July 31st, or in this case, August 1st. But Dan, there are a lot of people in the industry who would like to see this trade deadline be a little bit later because what what you have now is the one unified trade deadline, and now because of the expanded playoffs, more teams that are on the bubble and not really sure about their direction. The Angels and Otani, that's one case, but the Cubs are in the same conversation. Yeah. A number of other teams are as well. Uh, and I think it's it's certainly a big topic for a lot of GMs around the sport to maybe have a little bit of a later trade deadline in the future. We're talking to John Morosi, baseball insider for MLB Network. The Aaron Judge injury, first it was seemed like, oh, he just stubbed his toe. And then all of a sudden, he did more than stub his toe, and then we're still waiting for him to come back, and maybe he comes back as early as this weekend. But uh, how did we get to this point with Aaron Judge's injury that it took him this long to realize that he had a fracture there? Right, Dan. It, it's a really difficult situation for Aaron and for the Yankees overall. And, and to your point, it's been almost two months since he's played a game for the Yankees. And in that time, the American League East race has changed significantly. The Yankees have fallen back. They've fallen all the way to the bottom of the division. Uh, and, and now what we're not so sure about is to what extent he is going to be impacted by this for the balance of the season, uh, how it'll be handled in the offseason. What we know is that time is very short. And uh, maybe there was initially some swelling in that area that made it difficult to fully discern what was going on. But clearly for someone who prides himself on being in the lineup as often as Aaron is, he's such a professional player, Dan, on and off the field. And, and I know this is just aching him to miss this amount of time and to see the impact on his full team without him. I think it's had a huge impact on Anthony Rizzo, had a huge impact on DJ LeMahieu. They're simply not the same team without him. And if anything, Dan, it's really underscored why he was um, – <laughs> the right choice as the MVP last year and why he was worth uh, all the money they spent on him during the offseason as well. Also, I think this is right. Mark McGuire may have gone through this, but if Otani would get traded to the National League, then that he wouldn't win the MVP. Uh, they wouldn't combine his stat. Like, there's no way he could be the MVP because he would then be traded to the National League so his stats would only be attributed to to the second half of the season or in August on in, in the NL. Is that correct? Right, Dan. So, so those two awards are voted on separately by the baseball writers in each individual league. Uh, but one thing we've known, Dan, and I'll say this, Otani would be eligible for the award in each league. It, it would be up to each individual voter, and I've been one in the past, to decide if he had done enough in either four months or alternatively Well, two let me months. ask you that, though, John. Let's say he's traded next Tuesday. Who would be your MVP in the American League at the end of the season? 
I, I, let's put it this way. I would still consider him because let's think about this. It's it's four months of elite performance in two disciplines, Dan. So <laughs> I, I would have to say this. Right now, the MVP in the American League is Otani and will be Otani until someone proves otherwise. And and could Adley Rutschman, if he catapults the Orioles to a, a, a division championship as the catcher and, and the anchor of the lineup? Yeah. There's a compelling case there. If Bo Bichette gets the Jays to the playoffs playing a great shortstop, although he's he's scuffled a bit offensively in recent days, there is not an obvious second choice. It's not like last year where it was Judge or Otani and you were happy either way, or even the year before when it was Vladdy or Otani. That was an obvious one too. There is not a clear heir apparent, Dan. And if there's one thing we know for sure with Otani, all the rules that we used to think were sacrosanct no longer apply. Thank you, John. That's the first time I think sacrosanct has been used on the show, Paulie? Yeah, that's confirmed. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, John Morosi. We appreciate it, John. Baseball Thanks, Network Dan. Insider. They got baseball coming up today. Mariners Twins first pitch scheduled for uh, 110 Eastern. I mean, he made it sound pretty tenuous. Like these next two series, Detroit and Toronto, and let's say the Angels only have a couple of wins. I don't see him moved. I don't. I just, I'm looking at the logic of this. It's too complex to do it. Just, there are too many moving parts.